Hello, everyone. Welcome to this amazing, beautiful Monday morning on Identity Network's Facebook page, or you might be watching from Zap It to Twitter to Instagram to LinkedIn to all the above. So I hope um, you guys are all having a great day today, no matter where you're watching this from. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late today. I wanted to be able to start on time, but I have just, I'll tell you, the ministry has been so busy, so busy this week and then to this morning. And so we've just like been prophesying like crazy, got a lot of great reports from people who just are really like, you know, Jeremy, your prophetic word was so accurate. It was almost scary. Like, you know, I had one lady who might be on here today. And by the way, if you're on here, please let me know. Say hey to me. Let me know you're on here. Um, I'd love to be able to say hey to you as well on this, uh, on the live one uh, we do here on Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, Central. But um, one lady had written into the ministry and she said, you gave me a prophetic word that morning. And she said the night before I had had a, a dream. She said, and I was uh, finding myself at a place where I was trying to write down the dream, and I thought, well, I'll listen to the prophetic word later on, you know? And she said, and then she uh, listened to the prophetic word, and when she did, it was ironic. She listened to the prophetic word, and she said, what was scary, she said, is you even said in, in the prophetic word, you even said, hey, you know, Lord, show me you're going to have a dream, and in this dream, it's going to be, you know, X, Y, Z, and it's going to have this and this and this, and this is what it's going to mean. And and so she was like, well, that's interesting. So she was looking forward to having that dream one day, and then all of a sudden, she uh, remembered or that dream she had last, from last night. She read her notes, and it was almost like word for word, like she said it was word for word, Jeremy, of everything you said I would have in the dream. I actually had it the night before, and, uh, and it was so ironic because when she listened to the prophetic word, she realized that I described the dream she just had the night before. And uh, so it was really just, you know, she said it was just so scary. It was so accurate, you know. And so I love those type of reports because God is so faithful. He's so faithful. And I'm always looking forward to uh, to just these, you know, signs, wonders, and miracles that God is pouring out today, you know, in the, in the earth. Now, a lot of you guys might ask me, you know, like, um, what are you going to discuss today? And I didn't put a topic yet to this thing, and so maybe I'll put a topic to it here in a little bit. But, um, you know, I wanted to go back for a minute, and, uh, and you know, I was trying to, like, find something, you know, I was like, okay, Lord, I want to talk about this and this and this, you know, and all of a sudden, Spirit was like, you know, I want you to talk about this. Stay on the subject just for a little bit longer. And uh, which was the power to create, you know, of course, it comes from the power to create package. But um, but God really was telling me about the power of law of attraction. And I want to give you guys a great example. I had a, uh, a friend of mine who actually who uh, who texted me the other day and said, you know, I've uh, been watching these videos and, you know, you put out for law of attraction and said and just nothing really worked for me. And and sometimes it was that place where, you know, they said, you know, I don't know exactly really what to do because I don't know how to think. And when I started watching those videos, you mentioned about law of attraction, how biblical it was, and how God was doing this and this and this, you know, and it's all through the Bible. And 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 so, you know, they said, so I started thinking a little bit positive, but it didn't work for me. And and they said, so I started watching more of your videos, and you would explain more in, in upcoming videos that I started watching that would answer the questions as to why things were not working for me. And and so, you know, through this, they began to realize how it did begin to work for them, and then all of a sudden, it was just phenomenal how things began to take off for them. And it's interesting, because just yesterday, I don't know if this guy's watching today, but just yesterday, we had an email come to the ministry who a guy said, I was in prison. I was in jail last week, and um, and I just, I, was, I just Googled law of attraction. And, uh, and so when I did, your videos popped up. And I, he said, I never heard of you. Started watching them. And uh, I'm sorry, two weeks ago, he was in jail, two weeks ago. And he said, I was supposed to be in there for a lot longer. I started watching this. And I thought, well, let me just put this, put this to the test. And let's see. I mean, if it's, if it's in the Bible, I mean, is it a universal law? Does God, you know, step, establish this? And he said, and you started explaining how these things work. And, and then all of a sudden, he realized some of the main things to that was he hasn't awakened to the reality of that. He was just going by the knowledge in which I was teaching him. And all of a sudden, he said something clicked in me, and I realized that it had not become my revelation until now. And, and it hit me because even when we deal with, you know, the power to create package, which I'll talk about here in just a minute, for I know many of you probably already have it, but uh, we have a lot of newcomers on here as well from different avenues, different streams. But when he started talking about that, he said, and it hit me that what I, what I had done was I'd taken the teachings that of other people that had, that had said, that had sort of planted inside of me this negativity that if it's going to happen to me, it's going to happen to me, you know? And he said, and I didn't really realize just how much of an anchor, for lack of better words, in a negative way, that these wrong things have been began to sort of teach me. And, and he said, and all of a sudden, he said, I, turned, I tuned into one of your videos, and when I did, he said, you started talking about the, the fact that 
it's not even, you know, the law of attraction that you're looking at. It's the fact that you've got to see the awakening aspect, even if you've never heard of law of attraction, even if law of attraction didn't even really exist in the sense of like, you know, popular popularity. But, but he said, but you said in one of your videos that it was the idea of who I was in God. And all of a sudden he's like, something clicked in me. And I said, that's it. When you understand your identity and the reality of what you are and who you are, and all of a sudden it clicked for him. And believe it or not, he said, I'm going to start thinking this. So it was like a week later, which was a week ago, and he was supposed to be in jail for, I think, like a, a good month or two, and they just happened to let him go. And and he said, Jeremy, said, within one week, things started clicking for me. It wasn't like a magic spell. He said, it was just like God started, Spirit started opening these things up for me, and I started realizing you know, these things are happening because not what if he taught me or someone told me, but because I decided to awaken to what I am. And that reality set him ablaze. And I think one of the main things that a lot of us struggle with, and let's just face it, a lot of, I mean, I've had a lot of people even, you know, people today, you know, have told me, you know, that it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. And I think when I hear the term, it doesn't work for me, I think it sort of brings me back to the place where I used to be years ago, which was, you know, I thought I knew who I was in God. I thought I had an idea that maybe I'd, I'd, you know, had, I'd sort of, for lack of better words, muster up some power, you know, muster up some kind of anointing, you know, that maybe it would work for me. But I never realized that the functionality was, has never left me, that I am a continuous flow to creation, but I have to be a flow also to myself and to my family, my friends, my loved ones, and even my enemies. And all of a sudden, it became a worldwide phenomenon within my spirit to understand that I am here to bless people. I'm here to bless people. And I think when I realized that how I was jointly connected to everything the kingdom was, that everything started clicking for me. And it wasn't that it actually, I, I looked at myself and I said, hey, I got it, so it's just going to start clicking for me. I, I slowly progressed into realizing why I was here. And and, and, when you th and whether you call it law of attraction, magnetism, Christ, magne whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. It all you know. Basically, God set set this into into law of emotion in the universe, and especially for those who believe. And so you have to see this from an angle to realize that you know what? I'm, do I still have bad days at times? Sure, I have bad days at times. Do I get in maybe you know bad moods? Sure, I do. Do sometimes I feel like things don't work for me? Sure, I do. But it's those times I have to look at my life and say, do I want to stay in this? Do I, I mean, do I want to stay in this? Whether I create more of the negativity or not wasn't even my issue. It was understanding and my identity was telling me I can't disrespect myself by staying in this vein of nothing works for me, everything that goes wrong, nothing works. Because you have to learn to snap out of it to say, hold on a minute, even if, and here's the idea I want everybody to hear me out on, even if the idea is, well, the more I snap out of it, the more I'll get back into my positivity, really flow in the anointing, flowing in that presence where things will start working for me again. It wasn't even about that, nor is even about the fact of if I stay in this cloud of doom and gloom and nothing's working for me, then if I stay in it, I might attract more of that. It wasn't even that for me. Do these things, you know, work? And yes, they work. We get that. But what worked for me and I want, I, want, I want everyone to hear me right now because I don't know who I'm talking to and I'm talking to some of you. What worked for me was when I realized I was dishonoring myself. I was disrespecting myself by allowing myself to think that my life was worthless or my life doesn't count or, or things happen bad to me or, uh, you know, or, or, or this day just stinks, you know, or you could use the other word you want to say, you know. Uh, these things... You know, when they hit you, you have a choice. There's an option there. And that is, wait a minute. When I, if I know who I am, I can't allow myself to be, to disrespect myself, to keep myself in that place where I'm down and I'm negative and why does this happen to me? Because here's what we have here's what I had to remember in my life. Now, now people in my life will tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna confess my faults one to another here. My friends, my family members, my household, everyone will tell you that if okay, here's my confession. Everybody just don't hate me for this, you know, not that you'd hate me, but the idea is when I begin to when something goes wrong, I just like, ugh, I get just like, ugh, I get so mad at the moment, you know? And yet I allow myself 10 or 15 seconds or maybe a minute to just let it out and just let it out of my system 
and then bam, I back, I, I bounce back to normal. I do. Everyone in my life will tell you that. They're like, whoa, dude, you know, hold on a minute, you know? And, and they know me, everybody that knows me knows that Jeremy has to just let it out for a moment. Just, just get it out of your system. And then I bounce back and I'm like, hey, what do you guys want to do for lunch? Hey, what, you know, today's a good day. I'm going to get back to Provisan. And the reason why, because I don't think it's wrong for you to have your moment. There's nothing wrong with having your moment to just let it out. Everything is going wrong for me today. What the blah, 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 you know? It's okay. It's okay to do that. No one expects you, neither does God expect you to be perfect and say, Oh, my dog just died. My cat's on drugs. My neighbor just shot my cow, you know, and I'm all, but I'm going to think positive. You know, life doesn't work that way. Of course, if a cat gets on drugs, I wouldn't mind. I mean, not that I want to see that, but that'd be a miracle. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how that happened. But, um, but the idea is you, it's okay for you to feel the reality of, of what's happening in that moment, to feel the trauma of why is this going on? But here's what you do. If you want to let it out, release it, do that. It's healthy to release stuff out of you and not hold it inside of you. Now, you might have to release it maybe in uh, maybe in an old-fashioned way that you used to just really get angry. But it's okay to let it out the moment. And when you do, you're like, you know what? Got it in my system. Now then, let's get back to honoring me because I love me. And I know what I am, who I am. I know I'm a co-creator, and because I'm a person that can create with the ability of the image and likeness of God, I cannot afford to stay this way all day long. I cannot afford to stay this way. Not because I could attract more of this, I could attract this, because I know who I am, and I cannot disrespect who I am. I can't dishonor me by living in a mindset that is unhealthy and toxic for me, and the toxicity, uh, you know, allowing myself to soak in that toxicity. I can't afford that because I'm valuable, and I have to know who I am and what I'm capable of doing and what I am and whose I am. And the moment that clicks with you, the moment you realize, wait a minute, it's okay for me to get mad and upset right now. It's okay to just let it out for a moment. It's okay. You know, the Bible says, be angry and sin not. I mean, you know, if you're going to be angry all day long, here's what Jeremy realized. Here's what Jeremy realized, okay? Here's what Jeremy realized is the moment that I have that moment, I mean, Michael, the moment I have that moment, I mean, like my hell moment, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we've all been there. It's like, I just want to just pull my hair out as if I have any. I just want to throw them against the wall, you know? You're like, ah, why is this going on? But the moment I have that moment, I have to... Allow myself to say, you know what? Get out of you right now. Take a couple of seconds and minutes, get it out of you. Then bounce back because you have to remember, Jeremy, that it's okay to release it, but it's not okay to live in it. There's a difference in releasing and living in it. And when we talk about lifestyles, oh, they got a lifestyle. It's so it's such a ridiculous phrase when somebody says, Oh, she's living that lifestyle. I want somebody to say, are you dead in the ground? Guess what? You got a lifestyle too, dude. You do realize that, don't you? Like everybody has a style of living. I mean, oh, you know, so, so guess what? Guess what, folks? Guess what, folks? Jeremy's living a lifestyle. Oh my God. And so are you. <laughs> it's a style of living that God chose for you. I'm like, come on, folks. You know, uh, we suffer from lack of knowledge. You know, if you don't have a lifestyle, you'll be dead in the ground. But anyway, so my point being to that is if you release it, versus living it out, carrying it out, then you understand I can release it, then bounce myself back. Bounce myself back into the place and the reality that, get with it, Jeremy. Let me give you a great example. David, when the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord, here's what that means. It means that David, and this is what the the literal language, uh, language means. It means David repaired himself, put himself back together, because he understood, look, I, I mean, I don't have time for this. I, so here's what this tells me. I want everyone to hear me. Here's what this tells me when we begin to understand about David putting himself back together. So when you ask me and, the, and people say in life coaching, I've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and God won't do this for me. I say because God is, God's job is not to do that for you. Hello. God works with us. But here's the key thing. David repaired himself. David, the Bible says, put himself back together. Here's what you have to do sometimes. You have to allow the Spirit of God in you, that powerful light inside of you, to kick in within 30 seconds or a minute or whenever you release it and say, now then, that's over with. There's my boundary. I cannot afford the rest of my day to be like this. I decide right now. I've released it. Now I'm letting it go. 
Release it. Let it go. Now, I'm bouncing back through my awakening to say in the rest of my day, the rest of my day is going to go good. And even if it takes me a little bit longer for the goodness to kick in, I cannot allow myself to live a style and ruin this day not just with negativity, but ruin this day with a bad attitude, ruin this day because there's people I'm going to encounter and yet I'm encountering myself. Here's a key thing. I'm going to encounter people. I can afford to be that way. But when I look in the mirror, mirror, I'm encountering myself. And when I encounter myself, I say, you know what? You don't have the right. You don't have the right to disrespect yourself to you. You don't have the right, Jeremy, to treat yourself this way. And you don't have the right to take a day in which God has given you and begin to manipulate it with your bad attitude, your negativity, and you dishonoring yourself, the day, and God because and people because you can't afford to dishonor the style of life you know your Heavenly Father has set into motion for you to live. So you release it. People who tell me, I, I, I just keep it all day. I keep it a bad mood all day long. Then you don't understand the power of boundary. You don't understand the power to say, stop it. You know what? I put myself back together right now. I'm, I, I begin right now to mend myself. You know, that's what David, I believe David looked at himself and said, David, get your life straight. Act, start acting, acting your age, David. Kick it into gear. You got life to live. You got things to do. Get back into the style of, of, of the Zoe kind of life, the God kind of life. Get back into it. Get back into the groove, David. I bet David encouraged himself in the Lord. That's what it means. It means David repaired himself, put himself back together. And sometimes you got to begin to say, you know what, God? Instead of me praying that you put me back together, I'm gonna, I want to work with you because you're the, you can do things I can't do, God, in me. You can, you can do things inside, you know, inside this, this vessel that I can't do, but there are things of my responsibility that I can do. And I have the power to speak to myself. I have the power to change my thought. I have the power to say, straighten up, Jeremy. You know, straighten up right now. You got you got the rest of your day that you got to live your life. And if you get in a bad mood and you dishonor yourself and you dishonor the day, guess what? People are going to see that. They don't deserve to see that. You don't have to act fake in front of them, but you owe it to yourself to get your life straight right now because you got a day to live out. And so you got to bounce back together right then and there. And so there's boundaries. You got to say, you know what? Hey, I refuse. I refuse to allow this to happen the rest of my day. Get out of your system. I mean, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to tell you something. This is funny. One lady told me one time, she said, and I know some of you are going to, I don't know how you feel about this, but one lady said, I just take 30 seconds and just cuss like crazy. And I'm like, okay, well, um, what do you do after 30 seconds? And she's like, and then all of a sudden I start speaking in tongues or, I'm, I, or, I, or I begin to realize, you know, that, that today I start speaking positive things over my life. And I'm like... If the shoe fits, hey, you know what? It's your business. I don't know what causes you to function and flow, but hey, you know, it's your, it's, you, you, you do what you got to do, you know? And, uh, you know, Terry, I, I like what Terry said on here. I know many of you are watching for different avenues, but shake it off. Hey, it's like what, it's like what Taylor said, you know, Taylor Swift said, ain't no, you got to shake it off sometimes. You do. And so, so here's what I would say to you. Find yourself, devise yourself some type of strategy or plan that when you know that something's going wrong, you say, you know what? I got a plan. My plan is, my boundary is I can release it right now. And then all of a sudden, bam, I'm done. I'm done. I'm getting it back. I'm, I'm shifting myself back, in, back into the order of the style in which I need to live. So I'm honoring myself and I'm honoring this day. And I'm honoring everything that is attracted to my life and everything that I'm encountering that I need to make an impact on that doesn't deserve my bad attitude. It's called selfishness. It's called selfishness. You can afford to be selfish later on after you've released it to say, I'm going to just be this way the rest of the day. You can't afford that. You know why? You don't know who you're going to encounter. And people say, I don't really care right now. I don't care who I encounter. Then you don't have revelation of true power of love to understand that people need you. They need your love. And you know you might be the only God they see, right? So because of that, you've got to understand I got to get it together right now. Take a deep breath. I told a friend of mine the other day, I said, look, look, stop right now. Stop right now. Take a deep breath. <sighs> just release it and just sit still for a moment. Just sit still for a moment if you have to. Whatever you've got to do, get it out of you. And then get back into it. Get back in the groove of your life. All right? People need you. People need you. And you need people. All right? So I want everyone, and, and once again, this has been our biggest seller. Like, I mean, I'm like, out of packages, this has been the, I've had to reorder these things constantly. Like literally, my staff is like, 
can we order more? I'm like, we already got a stack full. They said, you don't realize they'll be gone today and we're ordering more. So uh, so for those of you who don't have this, uh, I'm going to share something with you. For those of you who do not have this, or maybe you want to give it as a gift for a birthday present, then you know what? You could put a ribbon around, a bow around these four and put it in one of those gift bags, give it to people. There's nothing greater Nothing greater in all my life, okay? That sounds a lot too. Nothing greater in my life than to understand my role in creation that I can speak to my day. I can speak to my world. I can speak to my life and I can change it. The greatest honor we as human beings have been given is the power to change a situation. And the biggest situation right now to change sometimes is my life. I need to change my life today. Is it going to be perfect every moment, every day? Not at all. You're going to go into it sometimes. You're going to feel like you're just like, ah, oh, like, I feel like everybody's attacking me. You're going to feel that way sometimes? Sure you will. That's not being negative. You live in a world where, where bad things happen sometimes, you know, but it can happen less frequently. When you arise to the occasion and you say, wait a minute, I can't afford to feel this day, this the rest of this day with this attitude. Get it out, release it bounce back. Why? Because creation and the universe and the kingdom is all relying on what I say today. Think about that. I want everyone to think about that a minute. The, everything in this vast universe, the kingdom of God, is literally waiting to see what Jeremy has got to say today, what Jeremy is going to do today, how Jeremy is going to respond, how Jeremy is going to act. Do I act good all the time? Not really. But you know what? Most of the time I can say, but I got enough in me to know how to awaken to say, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? Uh-uh. Everything needs an answer for me right now. So I don't have a choice. Get to Bounce back, Jeremy. Bounce back. Start creating again. You can do it, you know? Um, and that's a key thing I want you to understand. It's not about perfection. It's not about mastering everything. It's about... Knowing how to rise during the fall and how long you're going to begin to stay on that fall and how long you're going to lay there and cry and how long you're going to say, you know what, I'm tired of this. I cannot do this anymore. Then you know what? Say to yourself, then I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it anymore. Get up, dust yourself off and try it again. All right? Because everything waits on you and your response. So people who've gotten this, not gotten this, please, there's the, the link right now, Power to Create Package. And what it involves, what it includes, excuse me, is probably the greatest uh, book so far. Now, my editor is on here. So you do realize, as my editor on here, I'm not going to tell you what he is. He's on here that this book has 403 pages. Dun, dun, dun. And the Prophet's book that's coming out soon. Wow. So this has got 400 pages to it. So Power Attraction, guys, The Magnetism of Christ Within. This will teach you biblically why you need to do this. Next book in the series, Manifestation. Manifesting the world you desire. This book is only found in the series. You cannot buy it separately. It's a brand new book only found in the series. Manifesting the life you desire. The next book in the series, Creating with Your Thoughts. So important to understand what our thoughts are, how they originated, where they come from, why would God set this into motion. My question, here's my question to God. Why? Why would you choose thoughts, God? Because it's the very thing that pops in our mind. It's the very thing that we can th cast out, the very thing we can create, the very thing we can expand, and the very thing we can starve. That's why this master of the universe decided to choose our thoughts to work for us to work with. Next book I love, brand new book too, Supernatural Attraction and Co-Creation. People don't realize the, di the difference between attraction and, cre and co-creation. It's not the same thing. Not the same thing. This is a really thick book as well. So order right now, Power to Create Package. Get it for your friends. Folks, let me tell you something. If you've got friends who are like, nothing goes right for them, bingo. Who do you think we need to give this to? You know, download the books right there from the link, or you can or you can order these four books, and I'd be more than happy to autograph them for you. I don't mind. Oh, and plus you get a free, uh, a free music CD with it too, in the downloads or in the package. So you'll get a free music CD with it as well. Just give your heads up on that. But this is very important. And sometimes you have to understand why I'm here, who I who I am, and 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 what I am, and why did God choose me? Why did God choose me in this time of my life? Why did God choose my thoughts to be? The, the rule of thumb in my life? Well, I want to answer all that for you. I want to help you out. 
And these will help you guys. And I know many of you, uh, my friends on here, some of you from Canada, I know many of you have gone through a lot of hard times recently. But you know what? We also know that there's an amazing goodness called God that can change all things around for our good. And we always thank God for the good things that God does for us. He is an amazing, God is an amazing strength for us. And, and God wants us to be that image, that self-expression in the earth to say, I create, you create. I'm the light, you're the light. I'm the energy, you're the energy. I'm the anointing, you're the anointing. Now spread it, now be it. Greatest, the, the greatest revelation of my entire life, and I'll let you guys go today, the greatest revelation of my entire life has been understanding my being. This is, this being, this being, this clay, this skin with tattoos, you know, I don't know if you see or not, yeah, hold on, let me see, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, my, tattoo, no. my arm doesn't stretch that much. You know what this says? Elohim. You know what this says? This other one? Creator. Elohim and Creator. They remind me every day of why I'm here. They remind me every day. They prophesy to me every day to understand your being, Jeremy. When you awake, when you wake up in the morning, you got a day to create. You got a day to be. What are you going to do in your being today? Well, you're going you're to do some doing. You're going to be a human doer sometimes today, but don't let that become the center of your focus. Don't let the human doer become your identity, Jeremy. Let the human being be your identity. Let the human doer, let that sort of be part of it, but it never should be who you are. And sometimes I get caught up in my doing. Sometimes I feel like, hey, my doing is I got to prophesy. My doing is my titles. My doing is this. And you realize that's not who you are. And when you, when you dismantle the beingness of who you are and you override it with your doingness, okay? There's my new word for you. When you override it with your doingness, you dishonor. You dishonor who you are as a co-creator. Don't ever dishonor who you are. The power to be is the most valuable thing that you've been blessed and gifted with, that God's blessed you with, is when he says, let there be. I want you to think about that for a moment. Let there be light. When God looks at us, God says, let there be. Let there be what? Let there be. Anything that pours out of your being, let it be. Let it be. Let it be the light coming out of you. Let it be the energy coming out of you. Let it be the love coming out of you. Let it be the honor coming out of you. Let it be the grace towards people coming out of you. The power to be houses all that stuff. That's why God says, let there be light. Because everything in the beingness of God Everything comes out of the beingness, not the doingness of God. Are you with me? God is not a and God is not a, a God doer. God is a God being. And knowing that everything flows out because being is who I am. I'm not a doing. I'm a being. Are you with me? I do out of my being, but I will never be out of my doing. How many just got that? I want you to remember that. I will never, ever, ever be, my being cannot come out of my doing. Only my doing comes out of my being. And when I, when I learn to be as a human being, my beingness, let us, let us make man in God's, in, in his image and likeness. The, the, when I understand my beingness, you will be flooded. Things will flood out of you. The problem with, with, with people that I know in my life, and I spoke to someone this morning that I love dearly, you know, one of my best friends, the power to not understand your being is a disrespect to yourself. And I want you to hear me for a moment. I, I was going to close, but I feel like this is important to tell you this. When you don't allow yourself to be, you dishonor yourself. And you try to make it up with doing. How many people on this earth do you think do that? How many people every day of their life spend time in my doing, my doing, my doing. I got to do this. I got to work hard. I got to do this. My wife wants me to do this. My kids want me to do this. I got to do, do, do. I gotta, I gotta do. And all of a sudden, they wake up with depression. They're miserable. And they're worn out. Because they overrode their beingness and shut the mouth of their beingness and allow themselves to become the doer. And it's not by works, lest any man should boast. The power of your being is the biggest gift and the biggest honor we've been blessed to, 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 to walk in this, in this world. And you've got to remember, when I know my being, I know what I am, I know who I am, then everything flows out of you. Everything flows out of you to creation. Everything that's needed, you have the answer for. But when you allow yourself to be the doer of your life, 
and you don't know your beingness and you're trying to find your way. You know why people, let me, let me tell you something. And this is what the spirit of God just told me. Do you know why people, do you know why people have to have titles? Because in a title, their doing flows out of that. If I was to say, hey, I'm Prophet Jeremy. Hey, I'm a prophet. Hey, prophet, prophet, prophet. Am I a prophet? Sure I am. whoop dee doo da day. <laughs> If I, you know, my name is Prophet Lopez, my name is Prophet Jeremy, doesn't it doesn't, doesn't even sound so religious, does it? It just sounds so religious. It's not even an honoring. It sounds so religious. But if I allow myself to be that, then here's what happens. My being gets, we have in the South, we'll say snuffed out. Some of you from the South will get that, you know, that word. But what happens, my beingness gets drowned. It just drowns in a title. Because a title as a prophet only flows out of, you know, that what is it they do, the money thing? Isn't that crazy? I know it sounds, that's a horrible, worldly thing. But it's like, it's like my title, I know a friend of mine is going gonna, gonna to laugh this off of me. But my title, if I was to put my faith in, in, in my title as a prophet or, or whatever, then here's what happens. Doing, doing, doing. Prophet's got to prophesy. Prophet's got to prophesy. I'm just floating out. And guess what happens? At the end of the day, I'm like, why am I so ha unhappy? Why am I so miserable? Well, what's, what's going on? Oh, wait a minute. You know why? Because I didn't do enough. I gotta prophesy more. That's it. I gotta prophesy more. And then for the people with a lack of knowledge comes into play and they say, Oh, the devil's trying to stop my gifting. The devil's trying to stop my gift. I better prophesy more. And you're like, We suffer from a lack of ignorance. Excuse me. We suffer from lack of knowledge and we walk in ignorance. Because the moment you put your faith in, in your doing through a title or through anything of your doing, you're going to have to make it happen, baby. You got to, you got to keep the money flowing. You got to keep it, you got to keep it going. And at the end of the day, you'll be depressed, probably suicidal. You'll be miserable. And you know what you, and here's what, here's what false religion does to you. You know what that means? Oh, brother, that means you're not doing enough for the kingdom. You better keep on doing more. And that's what people do. And it wears them out until they either, commit suicide, they get depressed, they cheat on their wife, or their husband, or whatever. And you know why? Because they never allow, thank you so much, Kimberly, they, you, they never, ever, ever, by the way, I hope you guys received our flowers. I hope I didn't spoil that for you. I hope you did. Anyway, uh, but they never allow themselves to understand their being. The moment I know my being, hey, you know what? Stop. I don't have to do. I don't have, I mean, I will do because I love, but I don't have to do because it'll never affect my beingness. That's my major priority. So I wanted to encourage you guys today. I don't know who that was for. Maybe it's for, some, for many of you. Maybe you need to practice that today, all right? Practice that today. Ask yourself, am I a doer? Am I wearing myself out as if I've got to? Or is my being finding the love for people, the love for things to be able to allow my doing to flow out of my being? And guess what, man? Do I get tired sometimes? Sure, but I'll never have to worry about being worn out, depressed, suicidal, all, you know what I mean? Any of that stuff because I kept myself intact. I kept myself intact. I, I never allow anyone to come against my being. Never. Ever. You can affect my doing, but you can never can affect my being. That's when you cross the line. All right? How many of you understand that? Never allow anyone to affect your being. They can cross my doing line any day they want to, but you will never cross my being line because I honor that too much. It's sacred to me. Are you with me? How many is with me today? All right. Love you guys so much. So please, there are the links right here. Download these four books, all right, and the, and the music CD with it, or order these today and call Power to Create Package. I believe it will help jumpstart you guys to understanding everything we've been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks. Now you guys know why I needed to talk about this today. So I just let, I just let the Spirit lead me, and I feel like that was for many of us. It was for me. I know that for, as, you know, as well. So I love every single one of you. You might say, you don't know me. I don't have to know you. The Bible even says to love your enemies. So, hey, if you hate me, I still love you. It's okay. I don't have a problem with that, you know? I always say this, what people think about me is none of my business. And you have every right as I honor how you feel and I honor how, not that all you guys hate me, but I honor, I honor the respect of how people think, all right? So doesn't mean, doesn't mean I'm going to turn my back on you. I still love you. So you guys get these today. Don't forget to support our ministry. Don't forget that. I'm still doing a lot of prophetic words today. Hello. I mean, if you need some some words from the Lord and need to you know, sort of help help our missions fund, so you guys have a dynamic day to day. I love every one of you. Thank you again, by the way. I don't give a lot of thanks uh, to Kenneth and to Pamela and to so many of you that are so hardworking. Uh, you know, as our team, I'll never in a million years ever 
uh, you'll never know how grateful I really am. I really, honestly, and truly cannot make it without 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 you guys and everyone else. I just, I truly cannot. And I thank God so much for those who who works with us as an amazing team. I could not be who I was today if it wasn't for you guys. So I honor every one of you. Love every one of you. Have a great day. Don't forget my podcast comes out on Wednesday, Wednesdays. And share this video. I'm going to mesmerize every one of you. Share the video. Oh, I got it, Jeremy. I got it. <laughs> share the video. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.